the honey competition. We got the Doc Bees, 100% raw and filtered honey. This comes from a small batch honey guy. And then we got the Behemoth, the Bon de Mons, the high end. So good. I love the little container. So I'm going to get honey everywhere. We got the Bon de Mons. We got the Doc Bees. These containers, I'm just going to spill honey everywhere. But then I'll wash my hands. Dang, Doc Bees. Sticky lid. I did already taste some of this honey. It's quite good. So I'm just going to goop some of the honey. It's going to be impossibly dirty with this knife. And so we're going to goop it. And, oh, we missed a tube entirely. Okay, we're going to goop it. This is a nice consistency honey. And then we're going to go ahead and just do a little wipe with my finger. Mmm, that's some good stuff. All right, and even open it. Oh, we did it. All right, this one... It's a smaller container, so I'm going to just pour it into the tube. Oh, that's some chunky stuff. And, you know, when they say there's chunky stuff in there, they don't, like, mean that it's, like, bad honey. It's just that, like, a lot of sugar is crystallized out. This is considerably darker honey. Um, all right, so there's some sugar chunks. Throw that guy in there. Boom. All right. We'll weigh them out so we can normalize them uh, by weight and then dissolve them into water to with that sugar. A one mil of the dock, one mil of the bon de mon, and we're just going to do a 10x dilution in water. We're just going to divert salt to waste, sugar to waste, and we'll just deal with what we can do. Diluted them out and spun them out, and you can still see that the bon de mon has that yellow tinge. The docks is quite clear. Alright, so we're on the hexyl fennel like usual, grabbing phenolics and polars and things like that, but we're using a slightly different method. You can see in the mass spec file we have a waste, so what we're doing is we're diverting uh, to waste. Let me show you how uh, we do that. So when you edit this method, you look at the method events and you can see that we are doing, uh, I like to do my waste diverts like this. You want to keep the system in LC initially and then right in the first second you switch it to waste. Then go back to LC at 0.55 and so that gets rid of the whole sugary salt peak that doesn't stick really to the column. Uh, to waste. Now, some of it may stick because this is a fennel hexyl column, so we'll see how this goes. Alright, we got the honey data. We got the dock bees on top, and we got the bon mamon honey on the bottom. You can see immediately that there's way more peaks uh, indicating there's like just more stuff. I'm hoping this is like floral things from kind of genuine honey that you would find, and then they're definitely reduced in the bon mamon. We have a few more polar peaks uh, out front, but let's go ahead and dig into the data here. So this is the untargeted data using MZ Mine, and we first got the Doc Bees honey up first. So the first peak I'm wanting to show everybody is this peak at 190. So you can see it right here at 190, 8.84 minutes retention time. And this is kyrenuric acid, probably saying that wrong. If we search this acid here, you can see that this is a metabolite, and if we search it with honey, see, <clears throat> it is a metabolite that can be found in honey, and it's typically found in higher amounts in honey that has been multiflorous, harvested, or uh, I guess the bees have gone to many different types of flowers, uh, and they've gone to bunches of different trees. It's kind of like an indicator of like a good floral honey, um, and so that's kind of what we're looking for, like honey. Uh, and then there's like all sorts of cool things about it, like KYNA is what they call it. Makes have uh, pain relieving effects. And so, uh, I guess some people want really high KYNA honey, and this is like a whole thing. So, uh, the first thing I want to say is there's basically, a, looks like a lot of KYNA in the Doc B's natural raw honey, and there's almost none if we zoom in here. I mean, there's a very small amount, you can see, a very small amount uh, in the Bomb Naman honey. All right, so that's the first thing that we've really found. All right, so the next thing that we're seeing in both, really easy, is fructose. Fructose is like 50-something percent of the sugar content in honey. Honey, let's see. So it's saying it's between 21 and 43 percent fructose sugar with a little bit of glucose and things like that in it. So uh, definitely the fructose amount varies based on the floral source and the climate and the honey and things like that. But we're seeing, uh, what is this, 1e to the 5 fructose in uh, the Doc Bees, and we're seeing 1e e to the 5 in in the Balm Namon. So I think, you know, as far as what sugars are in there, these honeys have pretty similar uh, fructose composition. Uh, the next cool thing that we're looking at here is in both of them we see this Epsilon DAC 
decalactone. You know, these lactones have flavor. A lot of people like the lactone flavors. They usually have like creamy flavors uh, and kind of like um, waxy. They're kind of like candy almost flavors. They're really nice. Um, so I'm thinking this is, it's in both of them. And I think this Epsilon decalactone could be the primary flavor of honeys. And so if you look up here uh, on Good Sense Company, you can see that it has a creamy, sweet tonka flavor. Uh, it's a coconut cream, milky, uh, kind of fatty, melted, sweetened coconut dairy cream, which is, you know, if, you, if you're thinking about it, that's kind of, uh, kind of the flavor of good honey. All right, so we have some other fun things in here, a couple other plant, probably related metabolites and honey metabolites. We have isomaltose, but we're going to go ahead and move over to the Bomb Naman honey. The only major difference, other than this 190 peak, this KYNA, KYNA, canary acid, which is an indicator of, of you know, the floral, multi-floral honey, the Bomb Naman honey has something a little bit concerning. We're identifying sulfa dimethoxane, sulfa dimethoxane. Sulfa dimethoxane does seem to be used in beekeeping. Here we go. Yes, sulfa dimethoxane can be found in honey that has been contaminated by sulfa amides, uh, which are antibiotics used in beekeeping. Uh, and so they were they were saying that it poses some health risks, and so I don't think you want. It. So, anyways, it's trying to uh, combat something that happens in beekeeping. Uh, called foul brood. So foul brood is apparently a contagious bacterial disease that affects bee, larva, and pupa. And so I, I guess it does what it says. It foul broods with this bacterium. So they're using uh, this antimicrobial agent and it unfortunately makes it into the honey. And I, I think that's kind of something you don't want in your honey. So he is this KYNA. And that's kind of like a marker of bees that have been foraging wild, uh, multi-flowers and just allowed to just go out and do their job as bees when they make honey and so instead of like these mass produced uh, honey. Uh, and so this will be a negative marker here when I'm looking at more honeys, this uh, antibiotic, and this will be a positive marker.